Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Happy Monday. First thing I want to do is say thanks to everybody watching. You're the real ride or die gamers. You're not going to let a once in a lifetime cosmic event like a total solar eclipse stop you from watching a motherfucker play the dolls and maybe some Balatro later. I'm not 100% sure what the docket is going to be. I got a bone to pick with the eclipse, man. And I get it. Like, sure. It's one of those things you may only see once, if ever. It's a humanity unifier reminding you that as big as our problems are, I mean, we're just little grains in, of infinitesimally small sand uh, compared to the gargantuan bodies of the universe. But it's hard for me, particularly, because for my um, circadian rhythms to get set properly... I'm sorry to tell you this. I have to do something called perennium sunning. It's when you get buck naked and you point your anus essentially towards the sun and then you hold your legs up so that you can get sun on your, um, on your taint. And for me, 3 p.m. Eastern is like the prime time. Like all of my circadian rhythm receptors are ready and firing like that's the peak time for me to do it and and he's taking the afternoon off because the moon is moving in front of it or something like that like nobody wants to work these days uh and and the worst part about that is that it means that all this mouth taping i've been doing at night is like totally useless so i don't know i'm just a little bit bummed out today hey thanks librarian for the gifted subscriptions thank you I'm also not knocking um, the eclipse at all because I think the answer is that it only has a certain width of, of totality, but this is like, without being rude, this is like the 12th once in a lifetime eclipse and I'm only 36 years old. There was definitely one that happened when I was in like the second or the third grade and then there was one that happened in like 2016 and then I thought that there was like another one that happened because it was in that Flat Earth documentary. And then there, this is 2024 has another one. But I guess it's just about, it's about the path that it shows. You know what would be really rare is imagine if instead of the moon um, orbiting around us, let's call it on the equator. Imagine if it orbited around us on the prime meridian. Then an eclipse would be fucking like a once in a trillion years sort of thing. You would need to be running some serious supercomputers to figure out when that when that those motherfuckers were gonna overlap. Love in the background. Thank you, thank you. We have removed I say we, but it was Kate predominantly. Removed the icicles. May they never return again. Remove the vase with uh, silver spray-painted twigs in it because it's spring, baby. Plastic vines, plastic flowers. A, a little, you, I don't know sure you can see it. There you go, the vase. Check it out. It's the springtime. I'm relatively new here. How old is Tomo? 11, I think. Old ass. It's pretty, I mean, it's like... Middle age to senior citizen for a uh, for a cat, I would say. You never know with cats, though, right? Like, I think around like ten years is where you start to feel like this guy's going to be retired soon. But then some cats, you know, you make it to twelve, and you're like, he had a good life. Some cats, you're like, I'm fucking thirty five. I remember this motherfucker being at Thanksgiving when I was like eight. My cat's 13. He's running around like a motherfucker still. I hear you, man. They still get the zoomies after they poop. That's how I know like they're, they're going to be getting old. If they take a, a stinky shit and then they walk up the stairs, I'm going to be like, oh, man. <laughs> Sun's getting real low. But as long as they take a, a horrible dump, don't cover it at all or make any effort to cover it. Instead, they just get out of the litter box and scratch the floor for some reason, and then they go like... <laughs> the ears go like all the way back. 
Okay, let's let's do some Vandal. 2011, 803 million views, huh? Robin, dancing on my own. Shots. This song is called Shots. This song is called Party Rock Anthem. <clears throat> no, I honestly thought it was 100% chance. Maybe that's because I've had uh, two hours of dance parties listening to the Chipmunks version with my daughter this weekend. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know this. Is this, is this, I've got a feeling? I got a feeling by the Black Eyed Peas? I thought it was like, it's Black Eyed Peas week or something. Hundred percent chance this is Peloton coded. Okay, okay, fuck it, maybe I don't know it. Like Jagger, that do you know what? Not an enormous fan of the song, but great bandal because if you hold in till you get to the whistle, you're like it clicks, bro. Oh, they need. I will say, they need to get a um, a new hint writer. It's no big deal. Like at the end of the day, I love that number six. If you get there, you pretty much got it unlocked. But motions like Jaggy is not a hint, bro. That is a, that is the name of the song. <laughs> it's essentially the name of the song. Good song. Okay, I mean... When the automatons playing it, yeah. I'm not a big Maroon 5 guy. I think I'd say I get my fill at the grocery store sometimes. You know what I was thinking today? I don't know if the world is ready for this joke, but is St. Peter like the most successful best friend of all time? Dude probably knew Jesus for like, what, eight to 10 years and was just a, like a, a good bro to the son of God. His reward, gatekeeper of heaven, for eternity. He gets to choose who's in and who's fucking out, and he gets to tell them and then look at their face when he's like, mm, sorry, you're going to hell. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. That's insane. None, none of my friends have ever given me a perk like that. Fake friends. <laughs> oh, man. Jesus is the ultimate Nepo baby. Damn, that's damn true. I never even thought of that. Yeah. Oh, you'll never guess how this prophet became the most popular religious figure in Nazareth. Oh, I worked really hard. I turned water into wine, fucking the fish and the bread and shit. Oh, there it is. Son of God. I knew it. You had to scroll down. Third paragraph. Plus, I'm the son of God. These articles, man. I don't know what's up with the bread and the fish. There's something about fish and loaves. I literally, I'm not, it's not an anti-religious joke. I don't know anything about religion at all. It kind of just dawned on me while I was talking about St. Peter that the dude is not like, um, I don't know if he's real, but he's not like a mythical figure. It's not like St. Peter carries like a 12 foot long Zweihander or something like that. It was literally just a dude named Pete who was really good and then he like died. He's not, he's not like an angel. Or is he an angel? I don't know how it works, man. He's a saint? So no, no saints can be angels. No angels can be saints. What about fucking Archangel Gideon? What does Scott Stapp say? Gabriel. That's it. Because <laughs> what a... Oh, great name. I cry out to God seeking only his decision. Gabriel stands there, delivers. I've created my own prison. <laughs> oh, man. Gabriel's not an angel? Well, what the hell is he talking about 
He's talking to Scott Stapp in his prison cell then. Archangel Gideon is from Dar Diablo 2. That's my bad. You definitely fight that motherfucker in Act 4, I guarantee. Gabriel is an archangel. Okay, now, a second question. What the fuck is an archangel versus an angel? They're like a super angel. They're like a boss. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, that makes sense. I just never knew. I always thought, like, archangel was like they... Like an anti-pope. Like they were in opposition to the, to the papacy, to the angel see. You know what else I was thinking? While we're talking about Satan, I was thinking it's crazy that the portrait of Satan that I think of, because I'm cooked and from North America, like a, a bright red guy with a goatee and like a curly tail and a pitchfork. He's, he's like 92 pounds soaking wet. It's crazy that people are still out there rocking like goatees. They're rocking this Satan facial hair. I don't, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying it's surprising how often you see a goatee out there, given that it has, like, that's the predominant association. That Satan is not canon. <laughs> more, more people rock Satan style than eat stew these days. Wouldn't it be crazy if I just pivoted to being like devoutly religious? Like, out of nowhere, like, Friday I left, and I was like, yeah, everybody eats their own cum. Don't worry about it. And then on Monday, I was like, praise God. <laughs> Through him, all things are possible. <laughs> I'm not knocking religion. I'm knocking myself, okay? Do they believe me? Do they believe me? Oh, Do the Chibli bit? I don't know the Chibli bit. I did, I loved, first off, Librarian, the, the dog eating the egg, very chibli coated. I was so happy to have a, um, a follow-up to that with chibli energy, because in my like moderated comments on TikTok, somebody posted, I like what you're saying, but I hate the way you look and the way you talk, so I hate you. And I was like, man, that's like, that's chibli, man. There's even like a space between the T and hat in that. I couldn't be mad. That's like way better than what TikTok comments normally are. Mm, in your stream of consciousness, you actually said synchronize instead of synchronicity. Completely undermines the 51 second fugue state you entered. I am very smart, by the way. It's Monday. We got time. Let's play some Poke Doku. I do have to tell you in, a, in an, an act of synchronicity. So I tweeted today. Oh, you're in the path of totality. Oh, you mean the dessert table at the buffet when your mom walks in? It's the eclipse today, in case you're watching this a few days later. Um, literally, like, 10 minutes after I tweeted that, the backlight on my monitor blew the fuck out. <laughs> and it was like a huge dark shadow on my monitor. Like, it was actually like a sign from above. Um, so I had to swap the monitor out with the monitor that I basically was not using. And this, it's so not used... It's so bright, dude. It's like when you first got the Game Boy Advance SP after just using the Game Boy Advance. It's freaking me out. I'm, I'm not used to looking so clear over here. So true. Kids these days will not understand the uh, nausea and headaches caused by trying to use a Game Boy pre-backlight. You're sitting in the back seat of your grandpa's like Ford Windstar and waiting until the sun peeks out from the clouds so you get three seconds of clear vision on the screen. Or God forbid you're playing Pokemon pinball like at night and then trying to like, you know, use the flippers when the street lights are coming by. No wonder I was getting car sick nonstop, bro. Then some dude at Nintendo said, what if we just put a light in there? And they're oh, <laughs> Drake and Lil Yachty. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is, and Jay will tell you, this is what the world looked like in the year 2001. That's all. I, I don't know what movie it is, but this is what shit looked like in 2001. And inside of this building, they're cooking up something that is going to make probably 1.4 billion people suffer. I don't know what it is, but... There's, there's something nefarious happening in such a mundane building. Nothing good has ever happened in a business park, okay? You think that evil architecture is like a big glass tower. Ooh, Lex Luthor fucking lives there. 
98% of the evil on earth is happening in offices that look like this, okay? Just a nondescript brick building, no restaurants in walking distance, everyone's driving to Wendy's for lunch, okay? Then they go back to making poison. This, I know this guy, this, I, know, I, know, I know everybody here. Are you, is this Blackberry, bro? Are you Jim Ball Silly? It's Blackberry, look at that. That's Jim Balsilla. What did I tell you? And then this guy is from Archive 81. I know this guy. Is it worth it to have two monitors? Yes. I am a two-monitor believer. It is actually one of the... If you have a computer and you can afford a second monitor, it's one of the best upgrades I could possibly ask you. Now, me personally, I don't think you need three. I don't know what you're doing, maybe different... Work requires you to have three. As a streamer, two is totally fine. I don't think you need a specific chat monitor. I just don't care about what you guys say that much. Like, I get the vibes, you know? I don't need to see it blown up in, like, size 72 font, just, like, assaulting my subconscious at all times. I like to keep a little bit of a, a filter up. <laughs> but going from one to two is actually gonna change your life. It's gonna be like if you thought that like only vegetables exist and then you're eating like an orange for the first time. You're gonna be like, I've lived in the dark ages for you know, my entire life up to this point. You can you just wanna say, it's real hard to go back two to one. Cause you're like, I got full screen on, the, on this one. How am I, would I put an OBS window as like a little tiny preview window in the corner and then a little chat window and then, Anyway, you get the idea. Two monitors, in my opinion, is a must. Born in 1948, this American author is known for books such as Hop on Pop and The Cat in the Hat Comes Back. That would be George R.R. R. Martin, okay. That's Tom Scott, bro. So if, that's Kirsten Dunst's face. That's a given. And that's fucking Tom Scott's head. <laughs> I'm not trying to make a joke. That's Tom Scott, bro. I'm hang on, I'm covering. This I, I'm not gonna get this. The hair is throwing me for a loop. Like it shouldn't be that. Is, is it Seth Myers? Because I was like, it's kind of Ben Affleck hair, but a much narrower jaw and build. I gotta go Seth Meyers on this one. It's the only thing that makes sense, but I thought Seth Meyers was kind of blonde. <laughs> oh, baby. That was Tom Scott, though. Am I wrong? Was anybody saying Tom Scott? I thought Walton Goggins. It's got a certain Goggins-esque look to it as well. I'm glad that I didn't think Walton Goggins because I would have been, I would have anchored on it, I think. Alan Ruck. I, but I always see Alan Ruck with a little bit more like, a little bit more like, like a, like a close crop, like, I know what you're talking about. These individually wrapped milky hard candies come in orange and strawberry varieties. Cream... Cream, creme sucras, creme savers? Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you, um, Candy Stand Golf on addictinggames.com for teaching me what the hell creme savers are. Or maybe I've seen them at the grocery store. I don't know. In the U.S. version of The Office, the show takes place in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Adam Sandler played the son of Satan. Um, it, that, that movie's called Little Nicky. Popeye's chicken is the shiznit. Featuring Quavo, what former One Direction member released the 2017 hit song, Strip That Down? That would be Quavo and Harry Styles. That would be Quavo and Zayn. Zayn Malik. <laughs> no, it's Liam Payne. My mistake, Liam Payne. No, it's... Niall Horton. It's actually Niall Horton. It's Lewis Tomlinson, I'm hearing. It's Lewis Tomlinson. Hey, Faced. Thanks for the gifted subscription. Thank you. Subscriptions, I should say. 
Can I say, by the way, I saw um, every once in a while I get fed something in my Twitter algorithm from Stan Twitter. I saw someone... Now, they, and you don't even bat an eye these days. You're Stan in... Enmix. You're Stan in... G Idol. You're Stan in... Taylor Swift, Nicki Minaj, Camila Cabello, Ariana Grande, etc., etc. But I saw someone that was running an account where they stan One Direction. And it was like a, a blast from the past, bro. It was like going back 12 years in internet terms. I was like uh, the food critic from Ratatouille taking a bite of that shit at the end of the movie. Like, it, it took me all the way back, man. Some people still out there, they ne for them, the war never ended, man. Heartbreaking, 71-year-old Japanese soldier finally discharged from the military after they got his 97-year-old commanding officer to fly in and tell him that the war's been over for 50 years. They broke up, man. I'm not mad at you, I'm just saying. Austin, the Cold War ended. Finally, those capitalists will pay for their crimes, eh, comrades? We won. Ah, yay, capitalism. I know what you're talking about, Mike Myers. Flash, clash, top hat, monocle. Top hat, monocle, cane. Something else. Shit that the Monopoly man is doing. Hang on. A tiff? A spat, a clash, and a scrap. These are fights. What? <laughs> a spat, a scrap, a tiff, and a tangle. A clash and a tangle. Top hat monocle, cane, wink. <laughs> think about it. Just think about it, man. It's so doable. Like there's there's so many that are there's three obvious ones today. They they were cooking on Monday here. A jack shit, squat, zip, zilch, nada, jiff. I don't we'll we'll figure that shit out, man. I mean, love is if you have no score in tennis. Okay? Be patient. Work with it. Work with it. Heart beat. That's all right, you can remind me tomorrow on that one. I'm busy. Rearrange top hat. You can make Pot hat. <laughs> Add a can, can, win, spa, jiff, tiff, fla, tan, can, skirt, rap, mon, thrab, thrabbit, thrabbit, beat. Beat, heartbeat, love, wink, zip, squat, jack, scrap. I knew it. It is impossible, bro. Brief moment, flash, heartbeat, jiff, wink, dispute, clash, scrap, tangle, tiff, jack, love, squat, zip. That was a really tough one today. I'm not mad at them. Accessories for Mr. Peanut! What the hell is spat, bro? Shoes! Honestly, I like this. I like this. This is the New York Times hidden back. They're not pulling some J. Cole stuff saying, sorry, our puzzles have been so tough. Fucking cat, dog, bird, fish, pets you have in your house. <laughs> Mom, dad, spouse, best friend, people who love you. They said, fuck you. We're going to make it even harder. The beatings will continue until morale improves. By the way, we need more. I'm sorry. Let me pause this briefly. We need more diss tracks not in rap. Why does rap get a monopoly on disses, bro? How many diss tracks are there in rock and roll? 
Range Life by Pavement, The Freed Pig by Seba Doe. You Wanna Know by Alanis Morissette, Jolene, I guess, but we don't even know if Jolene's real. You're So Vain by Carly Simon. Cry Me a River by Justin Timberlake. Like, we're running out, man. We need more diss tracks in classical music. Entirety of Rumors? I don't think Rumors is diss tracks. I think Rumors is like it's a searing look at real human emotion. I don't, I don't know. What, what song are they dissing? They're dissing each other? They're not dissing. What do you mean every single one? Nobody dissing anybody on secondhand news. They're just eating pussy outside. Literally Stevie and the drummer. Don't fucking condescend to me. I know the history of rumors by Fleetwood Mac. I, unlike most people here, that album didn't just pop into existence when that motherfucker was drinking ocean spray on his longboard, okay? I was rocking that shit back in high school. Not when it came out. It was like 30 years later, but still. I'm, I'm asking you for the lyrics, motherfucker, where they were dissing each other. It's not a diss track if just people hate each other, but they write awesome songs. That's called a fucking band, bro. You can go your own way. That's not a diss track. There's no diss in there where they say like, you know, hey, Stevie, um, fucking fuck you and fuck your little fucking dog too. That's how disses worked in the 70s. How would you know, motherfucking 2004, baby? Go listen to No Vaseline by Ice Cube. He names every person who's ever wronged him and some motherfuckers who just got caught in the crossfire basically says he's going to fucking kill and eat them. Maybe he does some other stuff too that I'm not even going to mention before the end. Then they're like, oh, best diss track of all time? Loving you isn't the right thing to do. Packing up, shacking up, so you want to do. Ice Cube said he would fucking kill MC Ren, Easy E, and Dr. Dre. And give Jerry Heller, the producer, a fate worse than death. Another lonely day. Man, fuck you. <laughs> so I'm getting, they're knocking on the damn door. That's okay. Ice Cube also anti Semitic. Wait till you hear what he's saying, no Vaseline. Those of us who were real OGs, it's already been known. Anyway. Yeah, I'm ready to continue, I suppose. Black Ops, Call of Duty, Pirate's Booty, Gold, New Delhi. Okay, we got something wrong here. I'm going to say Loot. Moon, what's been fully eclipsed? The sun. I'm sorry, I mean, if I want to, people are talking smack about my like 22 second minis. They're saying, oh, I solved it in 20 seconds. So I got to stop reading the shit out loud because it's slowing me down, honestly, and it's debuffing me. <laughs> Fuck it. United States of America. 5,000 kilometers away. Norway. Hmm. Okay, 600 kilometers from Norway. Faroe Islands. I honestly thought that was its own independent state. I'm going to say Scotland. Did you mean Iceland? As a large language module, I'm not capable of fucking coming up with the most reasonable... No, I meant Scotland, bro. If anything, you should say, did I mean United Kingdom? But like, let's not even get into that. Lithuania. Hmm, Latvia. There we go. Scotland is a country, but it's not independent. Honestly, I'm sorry to tell this to the United Kingdom. We moved past it. It is in the, if it's a country, it's independent. The rest of the world is tired of playing by your rules. There was a time when we had to. We had no other choice. You basically defined the rules, and we just sort of played along. Now we've progressed past the need for that. You can modernize and get with the times. I get better get out of the new one if you can't lend a hand. Cause the times they are a changing. Tell that to the United States, or as I call them, the fucking divided states. Inside the twisted mind of Alex Garland. I kind of want to see civil war, but I can't admit it because everyone's clowning on it. 
They don't want to hear me say it's got a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes and the director's got a really good track record. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear They just want me to make a... I watched Devs and he really lost it on episode 12, season four. Yeah, so plus two, fave, fave, plus two. Listen to my podcast. Man, fuck you. Devs only had one season? Listen, motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't know that. Who are you talking to? It really is like mostly myself. I don't think it's actually like that troubling to talk to yourself. It's like Tom Waits said, you know, well, as long as I can be with me, we get along so well, I can't even believe it. How often do you respond to Chatter's messages? Several times an hour. But honestly, like I'm just telling you this better to pull the bandaid off. If the message is something like, what's your favorite sandwich? I mean, you're in the, do you know in Mad Max, Fury Road, when there's the rabble and they're all like scratching each other and shit when Immortan Joe turns the tap on? That's what's going on right there. You need to hit me with like a Furiosa type question if you want to have an expectation that it will likely be read. Otherwise, it's just, I mean, you're playing the lottery. If I read every question, we would never get anywhere because no, no disrespect, the chatters will tell you. The only person who hates chatters more than the streamer is the other chatters. <laughs> It'd be like, we'd never get anywhere. The questions are just cooked, man. Hey, have you fucking seen Kong, X Godzilla, New Empire yet? No, I have. What do you want me? You want me to do 15 minutes? I'm never going to see it. It's not, I'm not knocking. I'm just never going to see it, okay? It's not going to happen. I sometimes ask really good questions and get buried. I, it's as, as your non-parasocial friend, I'm just going to say it, I see like a lot of stuff in the chat. I don't think the question's that good. Just because you want to know it doesn't mean it's a good question. It's crazy to me, and I'm not trying to be derogatory towards anyone's job or anything. It's crazy to me that there's like a whole press cycle in both sports and movies that we expect uh, athletes and actors and actresses to do. And they're like, well, that's part of the fucking, that's part of the, the rub of being an athlete. You get paid millions of dollars, but then you have to answer the hard questions, you know, before your match. And then like the hard question is like, hey, we're just curious, uh, what'd you eat for lunch today? A fucking chicken and rice? Chicken and rice, huh? Oh, wow, chicken, chicken and rice. Fucking Naomi Osaka's pregame meal. You won't believe what it fucking is. I was vacationing at the Australian Open with my husband. And blah, 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 blah. Chicken and fucking rice. Paragraph eight. Hey, so what was your, what, what kind of, what did you do to prepare for your role as fucking Fade Rautha in Dune Part 2? Who fucking cares, bro? They made the movie. Go watch the movie. Journalists are annoying but necessary. I'm not talking about fucking damn rather, bitch. <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> I'm talking about AOL blast, okay? It's two different situations. You get the piss shivers. Now, see, that's a good question. Yeah, sometimes. I don't know why I'm getting hit with huhs. I don't know what good goes on in here. I know what happens to my thoughts. But I don't know, like, in, in terms of the, the meat and machinery of my brain, how would I know? What causes a piss shiver? You know, there's like a trillion fucking microorganisms and neurotransmitters and like biological processes we haven't even begun to understand. What the fuck is a piss shiver? It's like you piss and it makes you shiver a little bit. It happens, it's literally, no offense, you need to go back to grammar school. Piss shiver is a sentence that needs no explanation. It speaks for itself. Seems like a dude thing. You got me. What am I supposed to say? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry if women don't get piss shivers. It'd actually be like more convenient for you because you're sitting down to go pee. If anything, it's hard to be a man and get a piss shiver because you got to lock the fuck in. Otherwise, you're going to spray that shit all over your damn bathroom. Not to mention the one in 100 peas where you piss and it just goes like fucking split tears in Isaac mode. I don't even want to, or you piss and there's like no rifling. 
So the fucking range is cooked and then like three seconds into the piss, the rifling starts and then you got to like reposition yourself. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, man. Must hurt to be the guy who said, what's wrong with your dick? And then there's like a thousand plus twos. What's wrong with your dick, motherfucker? Well, your piss is the same every time. Where's the fun in that? Columbia Pictures, seven weeks, 13% drop. I mean, this is, a, this is a blockbuster, bro. It's a blockbuster starring Bill Murray from 1984. There's no choice. It has to be Ghostbusters 1. The legs are out of control. <laughs> Let's move on. 7,872,000 in week one. Wiley is a lazy engineer. Landry is a sergeant specializing in armor. They've never met, but their lives become entangled when Landry must take the tank widely designed into combat. <laughs> what is this Looney Tunes shit? Best defense. <laughs> okay, Warner Brothers, $100 million. Kind of got its lunch ate by, by Ghostbusters, but still chugging along, starring Zach Galligan. Phoebe Cates, okay, so it's Fast Times at Ridgemont High. At first I was like, who? Never mind, it's... Cute, clever, mischievous, intelligent, dangerous. Could this possibly be Gremlins? The movie known as... It is Gremlins, okay. Good week so far. I mean, dude! Gremlins and Ghostbusters came out the same weekend in 1984. No wonder... Gen Xers and boomers can't fucking let the 80s go, man. No wonder we're on season 28 of Stranger Things. When was the last time we got two amazing movies that came out? Of, well, amazing might be a stretch, but two... Well, you know what? Actually, last year was pretty good for movies. Never mind. <laughs> Barbenheimer? That's a good point. That's a scary thought that people like 20 years or 40 years from now will be like... Bro, Barbie and Oppenheimer came out in the same weekend. They don't make it like two, 2023 anymore. Nowadays, we got all we got is Transformers and fucking... You get the idea. Four million dollars. This one's going to be tough. Noah Hathaway and Barrett Oliver. A boy who needs a friend finds a world... It needs a hero in a land beyond imagination. It's the never-ending story, story. Ah, nah, 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 nah. One thing that is fucked with my head is thinking that I had watched the never-ending story a thousand times as a kid and then growing up and realizing that actually I watched the never-ending story too, which has uh, like a 1% on Rotten Tomatoes and everybody agrees is total dog shit. But I thought it was the first one as a kid and I watched it like a billion times. And then realizing that I think that's where like my fucking weird trauma in the Super Mario Brothers movie with like depersonalization comes from. Because in the never ending story too, it's like every time the Sebastian can make wishes in order to exercise his power. But every time he makes a wish, he loses a memory. And then at the, like near the end of the movie, he uses his last memory of like his dad to bring Atreyu back to life or something like that. I was fucking watching that shit front to back, rewind, front to back, rewind, front to back, rewind, like eight times a day when I was six years old, man. Columbia Pictures, starring Ralph Macchio. Could be Karate Kid 1, 84 sounds about right. Week 5, 35 million. I mean, that's, this is like Dan's fucking week at the multiplex, man. Ghostbusters, Gremlins, and the Karate Kid with the never-ending story. What's next? Back to the Future and Rise of the Skywalker coming out in the same week? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Don't forget about Best Defense. Oh, man. Best Defense. Hang on, I got to check something. RT Best Defense. 13% Rotten Tomatoes. How about Metacritic Best Defense? 29% on Metacritic is not so bad. Uh, number one review. It really isn't easy to make a movie as mind-bendingly bad as Best Defense. Okay, never mind. Seems like the critics did not like it. 
Tsushima. Rise of the Ronin. Came out about a week ago. Fucking um, Asura's Wrath. Wrath. Doesn't exist, okay? Um, Neo the Second. Oh! Final Fantasy. This fucking Crisis Core, bro. Mm. This fucking Dirge of Cerberus. <laughs> I mean, listen, I gotta try the new one, right? Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 7. Remake. Rebirth. Rebirth. There you go. <laughs> Weren't you sponsored to play this? Yeah. I didn't, they didn't say here's a picture of the cover. They said please take advantage of the fact that when you're using two party members and you switch between them, there's a unique synergy mechanic. Just like there's a synergy between you and your co-commentator. You know what's crazy? And I, I mean this with genuine respect. Other, like in Hollywood, when they remake a movie, they're like, we're remaking Ben-Hur. What should we call it? Ben-Hur. We're remaking Total Recall. What should we call it? Total Recall. Let's call it fucking remaking RoboCop. Let's call it RoboCop. Square Enix said nuts on the table. Our new game, our, our $700 million production budget game, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Take it or leave it, bitch. We're not tricking anybody. <laughs> then the second one they were like are we going to call it Final Fantasy 7 Remake 2 they said nah let's call it Rebirth what's the next one going to be called fucking Repentance anyway you get the idea it's an Isaac joke just a little Isaac joke for you it's fucking No Man's Sky bro it's the Outer Worlds no it's um, um that game the one where you're in outer space. <laughs> to Ast Astroneer. Yes! <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. That motherfucker was stuffed to the brim with triangles. Is there anything I can help you find in there? It's all right. It's okay if my headband falls into uh, Tomo's water dish. It's not like it's uh, elastically held to my forehead for 120 minutes every morning when my skin's at its most vulnerable. <laughs> to be honest, there's not, it, it can't do any more damage to my forehead skin than like my own sweat does. So I, I guess I can't be too upset. <laughs> Use a sweatband? Yeah, we're fucking hoofing it. Oh. We're we're hoofing it, bro. I'm sweating. Don't people like the background? They love it. Let me just fix the little. Mm. What did they say? They said it looks floral. They said love the background. Looks stunning. Very gorgeous. Loving every minute of it. Fantastic. I'm just reading what they're writing. <laughs> oh, hello. I'm trying to see maybe if I put it right here so you can see. Yeah, I do have a big head. Oh, still invisible. Visible. Look at that. Yeah. That's beautiful. You're like the eclipse. You're the you're the moon and then the background mm. and the sun. Has anyone seen the eclipse today? Um They said it started in Mexico. Hey. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Apparently, Chad told me there's going to be a good one in Vancouver in 2048. <laughs> or 2046. <laughs> That's not that far. Mm, still be kicking. Finally, you got a good reason to eat right. Me, after 24 years of uh, 
cardiovascular exercise, eating right, and not making decisions that are bad for my health. What the fuck? It was like four seconds long. Oh, man. That wasn't worth it at all. I should have been doing drugs. <laughs> I, should have, I should have been doing drugs, man. There won't be another one here till 2116. Sag? Is that what we're, we're doing now? We're sagging because I'm going to have an eclipse in 24 years and you're going to have one in fucking 92 years. Like, I'm not, I'm doing everything I can to suggest that you don't have a victim complex. It's kind of sad. No, it's not sad. Like, it just is a fact. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm not poo-pooing the eclipse. I think it's cool that it brings people together. And it's a once-in-a-lifetime event that happens uh, two times a decade. I, I think it's cool. But, like, let's not get in, oh, yours is, ha yours is happening in 2116. Well, I live in fucking Slovenia. Slovenia is not getting an eclipse until 2241. We're all going to be fucking dead by then. Let's not, you know, pocket watch. I'm hoping I'm still going to be around in 2048. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Probably. Odds are I'll still be here, but you never know. Hi, Tomo. Stop. What do you mean? You guys are weak. You never consider your own mortality? You should try. It, it puts your life into perspective, man. When, you st when you're like, what do I want to have for lunch today? Okay, first thing we have to establish fundamentally, I will die someday. Okay, so with that out there, with that on the table, how should I structure my life in such a way that I get as much out of it as possible? <sighs> Fucking one McDouble, no fries, no drink. It's that easy, bitch. <laughs> Three grilled cheeses, exactly. Vinegar. A noun meaning a sour liquid obtained by fermentation. and chips and sussy vinegar. An adjective meaning being one of two or more distinct individuals having... I gotta give him some credit. She's got hops, bro. Because uh, each is a very hard word to describe. If my daughter said, what does each mean? I would be like, I don't know how to explain it. It just is. <laughs> Prolix. An adjective meaning unduly prolonged or drawn out. Too long. This word originated from Middle English, influenced by both Anglo-French and Latin. Prolix. Fuck. With an I? P-R-O-L-I-X? With an I? Maybe the person who does it is, is, a, is prolex. Hey, you. Don't, don't walk on my keyboard. You, you're starting to think you own the damn place. I don't even own the damn place. Uh, technically, it's not true. I own it as a result of a loan from the bank. I'm not going to, you know try to mislead you and tell you the bank owns it. The bank doesn't own it. You don't understand how mortgage law works, but either way. Slobbery. A noun meaning saliva drooled from Slobbery. the mouth. Basically, an adverb okay. meaning at a basic level. In Wisdom. A noun meaning ability to dis... I don't respect when an RPG has an int and the wisdom stat. That's all I'm going to say about that. I don't want to elaborate. I refuse to elaborate. Corsair. A noun meaning pirate. The company that owns Logitech. I mean, that owns Elgato. I mean, Logitech owns Elgato. I don't know what the fuck Corsair is now that I think about it. Proctors. Mm -hmm. A noun meaning someone who... Proctors gambles? Sure, I, I hope they do. Proscenium. A noun meaning the stage of an ancient Greek or Roman theater. Proscenium is from Latin and Greek, meaning front of stage or dramatic background. Proscenium. A noun meaning the stage... Okay, nailed it. Oh, I bet it's with an E, because it's like E-U-M. Habiliments. A noun meaning characteristic apparatus. I use that word every day. Pruritus. A noun meaning itch. Derived from the Latin word prurire. Pruritus. <laughs> a noun... What? Pr... Prur... Itus. Oh. <laughs> Pruritus. Proscenium and pro okay, fair enough. That was a that was a hard one. If you think wisdom and intelligence are two different things, hand out with some DS students for a day. Okay. Afa Gandalf. You typed the word wrong first. What is a DS student? Oh, you know, I bet it's a, a an HS student. I bet it's a high school student. 
I mean, I definitely agree intelligence and wisdom are two different things. You probably re uh, reach peak intelligence when you're like 19 or 20 years old. Like you can't stop your brain from doing math. If you were just walking, you know how like when you're outside, you can't not read? Like if you see a sign, you don't have to be like, I'm going to read that. Your brain is like, boom, motherfucker. All countries' flags are available here. It's that easy. At age 20, my brain was like that for math, at least arithmetic. If, if someone walking down the street was talking on the phone and they were like, hey, what's 14 times 21? I would have fucking knocked that shit out of my head involuntarily. Now, it's like a seventh seal negotiation chess match that I got to get into with my brain. I'm like, hey, brain, I'm floating you something. 14 times 21, I know you know how to do it. And it's like... <sighs> How important is it to you? And I'm like, I'll fucking eat some cookies after. I'll give you some sugar after this if you do it. And it's like, ah, uh, if I really committed to myself, I would have already finished it by now. But now it's too late. I could have just stood. And then I'm like, okay, well, never mind, man. But also, when I was 20, I wasn't making the same caliber of decisions I'm making at 35 for sure. Intelligence is like the processing power of your brain. And wisdom is like the intelligence of the user that's holding the fucking mouse. <laughs> you could have the Large Hadron Collider, but if you got like, a, you know, a 12-year-old man in the console, you're probably not going to get too many amazing findings. But you sit someone with a gray fucking long-ass Alan Moore build in front of a Pentium 2, they could send you to fucking the moon and bring you back. Texas toast style bread, protein. <laughs> what the fuck is this, man? Sussy sandwich? <laughs> what? I'm sorry, you killed me. It's a description of protein, chicken, seafood, tripe, and or mushroom. Vegetables, bamboo shoots, carrots, peas, and or corn. What the hell is this, man? They have Texas toast outside of the United States. Maybe it is the United States. I don't know what the fuck this is, man. Ice cold? This is a crazy guess. I was going to say Australia. That doesn't make any fucking sense. It's got to be Japan, bro. Australia? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Indonesia? Cool. Where are we going, bro? Where are we dropping? Fucking Vietnam? Coffin bread? <laughs> Coffin bread is a Taiwanese dish. It's a popular street food made by hollowing out a thick slice of white bread and filling it with seafood, chicken, or vegetables. It's then deep fried until crispy and served with creamy sauce on top. This is the lowest amount of points that I got from a single guess, but holy cow, coffin bread, man. Sounds good. I gotta be honest. I'm very polite when I play this game mostly. I don't even, I, maybe I would try the coffin bread, but I'm definitely not ordering a full order myself. I need somebody to order it first and then give me a, a square. <laughs> and then maybe uh, if it's good, I would. <laughs> I would order some myself. I think I'm a sussy sandwich, bro. That's a sussy sandwich as far as I'm concerned. Actually, worst photo of all time. POV, you are one microsecond away from passing out into your soup. <laughs> you are traveling at 70 kilometers an hour towards the world's largest soup. Steak, kidneys. Okay. Ireland. Skirts and kidneys, of course. Pairs nicely with coffin bread. Can't disrespect that, I suppose. This is an even worse photo. What is this? What am I looking at? What, what in the PlayStation 3 JPEG dinner is this? What the fuck is this, bro? Is a damn Kabuto? Is a giant isopod in my soup? Waiter? Garçon? I think this was meant for HP Lovecraft's table. Beef... Tendons, peanuts, rice, anato seeds, ginger, garlic, onions. Okay, when you see ginger, garlic, onions, 
soy sauce. If your ass isn't going to Japan, I don't know what to tell you. That's cool. Okay, my mistake. That's cool. Star anise. How about Thailand? Warmer. How about Malaysia? How about China? How about Taiwan? To go with the coffin bread. Balbacua. Okay. I basically, I'll just be honest. I got my ass beat today. It's a popular comfort food. Fair enough. <laughs> Little foot's foot. <laughs> if I had to eat one of those, what am I eating? <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry. Probably the Balbacua, I suppose. No disrespect to Ireland. We've already talked about the coffin bread, but I don't really want to eat pig kidneys. I'm not a big organ meat kind of guy. Paul Bettany and Alfred Molina. Very simple film known as Spider-Man 2. He probably, Alfred Molina would have higher billing in Spider-Man 2. This could be Frida. No, Ian McKellen, Paul Bettany, Alfred Molina. X-Men, The Last Stand. Jean Renault, Ian McKellen, Paul Bettany, and Alfred Molina. It's like they're making the Avengers of actors who are from different European countries. Except probably Ian McKellen and Paul Bettany, now that I think about it, probably from the same country. Um... Audrey, oh, it's fucking Amelie. I'm actually dumb. It is the European Avengers. No, it's not. It's fucking um, um, the Da Vinci fucking code, bro. The Da Vinci code. Yep. Tom Hanks as Robert Langdon. The, if you were not like sentient in 2005, you don't know the stranglehold that the Da Vinci code had on the culture. It seems to have had no lasting legacy whatsoever. Um, but in 2005, it was fucking everywhere, bro. They made like six Da Vinci Code movies. I saw that shit in theaters. I hadn't even read the book. That's how I, I was 17. What was I doing seeing the Da Vinci Code in theaters, bro? Waiting for Dune. So true. I didn't know it yet, but I tried to download it from LimeWire. When I opened it, it was just some German porno. That was back in the day when malware was funny. You'd be like, hey, Dave Matthews Band, I did it, dot fucking div X. You're like, oh, that's weird. I thought it would be like an MP3 or something. Then you open it up and just see someone getting their shit turned inside out. You'd be like, ah, I'm not going to delete it. Already spent the bandwidth on it. Nowadays, you you know, someone on Discord is like, Hey, send me your banking information. I needed to verify that you're actually a real Nitro subscriber. Then you send it to them and they steal all your money. They don't even like fucking send 10 pizzas to your house or something like that. They just rob you. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to slash marker, slash marker the dolls. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I don't know. We're probably going to play some Ballotro when I come back. We got lots of challenges to farm. I'll see you then. What the fuck is Bean Battles? Game of the decade? Oh, here we go. It's me, your therapist. Is it the game of the decade? Or is it a game Ludwig played twice? It's a game Ludwig played twice. Bean Battles. Google says Bean Battles virus. Bean Battles hacked. Bean Battles on Steam. A unique take on the popular genre of Battle Royale. It actually was hacked, though. I believe that. Bean Battles. Looking to, I have a Discord server that's 18 plus that is constantly trying to revive old games and have fun with them. What the fuck do you mean is 18 plus? What are you doing in there, you fucking criminal? I'm on the subreddit for Bean Battles now. 19 year olds be like, I just started a Discord, it's 18 plus. Fucking you just showed up to adulthood, bro. Chill out a little bit. I wanna see a 40 plus Discord. It would actually be sick. I would say, like, though, at age 40, the freaks in there would be, like, way freakier than younger freaks. But, like, 90% of the Discord would probably just be people posting, like, a picture of their barbecue and stuff like that. <laughs> or, like, a plant. 
be like, check it out. I planted my, my ficus today. And it would have like a 400,000 fire reacts. People would be like, yo. I apologize because this describes um, at least some people in chat. But I mean this in a, in a begrudgingly admirant sort of way. I think no one out there gets crazier than like men in their 50s who have never been married or had like a, a partner live with them for an extended period of time. I have, I, I'm just one guy. I'm not like a, a social scientist or whatever. But I do feel like having a romantic partner live with you is great because you guys smooth out each other's weaknesses. You know, it's like the earth and the moon are tidally locked so that the moon doesn't like fucking go insane and the earth knows its place, right? But you got a man in his 50s who has like never been in like a super long-term relationship, never been married, never lived with like a romantic partner or something like that. I feel like they get like really into like a hobby age 28 and then they just run it till age 50. So on the one hand, you're like, it's a little troubling, but then on the other hand, you're like, oh shit, this guy's like insanely good with Vim. <laughs> like in a way, as a married guy, I'm looking at it and I'm like, I'm glad it's not me, but I can see like, I, with the way that my life was set up, I never even had a chance to get that good with Vim or painting miniatures or whatever. Like we're just, we're ships in the night. We're on two different, uh, two different paths, man. You're good at talking. It is kind of crazy. Cause like, I didn't really, you say you got to do like what? 40,000 hours or something to become a master. I don't even think I'm there with talking yet, man. I didn't talk that much as a kid. I'm sure this is going to be relatable, but like I, I, for eight years, from like age seven to 15, I lived with my parents and my grandparents and I was the only kid, you know? I didn't have any brothers or sisters. So then like sometimes I would be quiet. My grandpa would be like, why are you so quiet? In my head, I was like, I don't know. Now that I'm older, I'm like, cause there's fucking six grownups and me. Every time I'd say something, people would be like, I'm just waiting for this little kid to stop talking so we can get back to our adult conversation. I don't know, it must be a God-given talent cause I didn't practice it that much. <clears throat> okay, slash marker. Um, it's Balatro, bro. It's Balatro. We're Balatro guys. Of course we fucking whatever. You know. It's okay, YouTube video scuttled already. Way to go. <laughs> Good job. Fucking. God damn it! <laughs> now we're fucking cooking, bro. Let's play like a shitty pair. He says while passing a great voucher. So many of you, I, and I really try, because we were talking about how like living with a spouse is great because when you're being annoying, they tell you to shut the fuck up. Not everybody out there has access to that. So I'm trying to be like a parasocial version of that for you. And you're resisting. And it's driving me insane. I'm trying to make you better. I'm trying to make you more amenable to the people around you. I'm trying to make you more likable. I'm trying to round off those edges where for some reason you got some trauma like in your teenage years, someone was mean to you. And as a result, you're like, if someone's going to be mean to me, then I'm going to be mean to everybody. And I'm like, no, 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 you got to put the quills away. You got to put the spikes down. We're all adults now. We're like, you got to get along and no, they're, they're resisting it, man. They're resisting it. I know that you're only so acerbic because you're concerned how vulnerable you are if you take your defenses away. It's because your ass got the fucking porcupine quills out that I'm that I'm poking you, okay? If you smooth that shit out and relax a little bit, we could all just get along. What's the hotkey for restart? You think it's possible to get canceled as a streamer for telling someone to delete system 32? Nah? Okay. You gotta, um, go, um, stay hydrated, drink a glass of water. Oh, I almost did something I regretted. <laughs> By the way, when we were arguing about hand washing, and I said you guys wouldn't make it back in 2008, people took me out of context. They said 
boomer take. This guy's really saying you couldn't survive a Call of Duty lobby. I wasn't talking about verbiage. I wasn't talking about animosity. I wasn't talking about language. I was talking about in 2008, pre-swine flu, pre-COVID. I was going to say pre-SARS. That doesn't make any sense. People were just letting it fly, bro. You throwing a party at your house? Three of your friends would show up with fucking bright red noses and like a pocket full of tissues and stuff like that. They'd be going... <laughs> Coughing all over you, shaking hands. Nobody's washing their hands ever. You just sent it, bro. I'm not saying it was good. I'm just saying that's what it was like back then. Your sick friend draws the the first three kings in the game of kings and has to pour some of his drink from his contaminated cup into the king's cup. Then you fucking get the last king and you got to pour some Baileys in on top of it and it, it coagulates immediately. You're basically drinking like a cup of fluvinated vomit. Anyway, now everybody's like, nice to meet you. Fist bump. Man, fuck you. Or whatever. I don't know. Maybe it's good. <laughs> it's probably a good thing, right? I don't know. I'm sick of getting dapped up. Yeah, me too, man. Everywhere I go, people are like, look at this cool guy. Let's dap him up. And I'm always like, tsh, tsh, tsh. Get, the, get him in there. Give him a little hug on the back. Do a little, we got a secret thing we do with our feet. We have like a little secret foot handshake and then, you know, go back to the elbow and then like pretend elbow smash. And then we catch him with the other hand and we flip it around a little bit. And then we do the, like when you're snapping your fingers and you're hitting the fist on his fist, he's hitting the fist on your fist, you're hitting it like this, you're throwing it a little explode, then you're going, you're bringing it back, and then you're going, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're saying. It happens all the time. It happens every day. I was thinking, by the way, someone said, why are chicken wings so expensive? It's the part of the chicken that people don't want. Well, two things. I guess one thing I would say is that obviously people do want it now. The other thing that I would say is I had a bit this weekend that I thought would go off. And then everybody in the Discord kind of hit me with silence when I did it. It was, um, what if a witch was following a buffalo wing recipe that she found off the internet? Mmm, one file of Franklin's Roiling Crimson Tonic. <laughs> the one pound of featherless Velociraptor wings. One. <laughs> Sorry. Wrap it up, bro. Well, it's a... Dude, that would have, if that shit was on SNL in 1982, your dad would still be talking about it to this day. He would be like, yo, when Gilda Radner did Witch Following a Buffalo Wings Recipe, that was like a classic comedy moment. A rectangular prism of churned cow's juice. Hmm. <laughs> Place it in a bubbling heat box for 20 minutes at 400 degrees. It could totally work, dude. It could totally, you you got no vision. Your 35 year old is slowing, is showing? Well, it is slowing, that's for sure. <laughs> What's the funniest joke on fucking 19 year old Twitter right now? We don't like John Fetterman anymore? Yeah, that's a real knee slapper. It's some real shit, bro. People's lives are getting ruined. I'm telling you, that joke can work. You just don't understand. You're, you're not ready for it, quite frankly. It's fine. Lots of people aren't ready for lots of stuff. You got to do it anyway. This is going to end poorly. Me going to the movie theater after accidentally getting spoiled on what's going to happen in Inv Avengers Infinity War. Me going to any M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> This is gonna end badly. This, see, that's a good, that's a good, that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. There's a lot to like there. Okay, okay. It clears the witch joke. People are going to be begging for the witch joke in the future. You're just not ready for it yet, and that's fine. I stared at the eclipse raw. Am I cooked? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm cooked as well. So don't like get upset about it. <laughs> we 
we go again. Did you see the TikTok from the lady who was like, I looked at the eclipse in 2017, and when I woke up the next day, there were like blind spots in my vision forever? I did look at the solar eclipse six and a half years ago. I closed my right eye and I stared at the sun for a good like 15 seconds. Didn't think anything of it, not an issue. The very next day I woke up and I opened up my left eye to read on my phone and I couldn't read every other word. It, there, was like a, there was like a blind spot on every other word that I was reading. There is no damage that was done to my cornea. We've done all of it, but there was some damage that was done to something <laughs> in which certain parts of my eyes distorted. So I actually now have slow 2020 vision. I mean, there's like, <laughs> listen, I'm not, maybe you're fine, okay? There's people who have like fucked up their life. But when you look at what they were doing to fuck up their life, you're like, I bet that was kind of fun while it lasted. But then there's always like the dude in high school who's like, how much will you pay me to drink poison? And then someone is like, $5. And he's like, deal. And you're like, how did he die? He drank poison for $5. Like that's what looking into the eclipse is like. Everybody knows you shouldn't look into the eclipse. You get nothing out of looking at the eclipse instead of going like, ha, 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 ha. Like, what's the, what, what do you get out of it? What's the point, man? Looking at totality is totally fine. Just get the glasses, brother, okay? Like, we're just, don't fuck around with your eyes too much. Like, if you want to cut off your you-know-what with a pair of scissors, like, be my guest. But you won't catch me messing around with my eyeballs. Like, the things I used to see... There you go, six, seven, eight, nine. Straight vampire, unheard of. I was gonna say you ever hear of Dracula, but now that I think about it, there's no shot he wasn't by. I mean, no disrespect, but he's biting motherfuckers on the neck from behind and sucking bodily fluids out of them. You're gonna tell me that Count Dracula wasn't at the very least bisexual? I don't think he's gay because he's fucking in love with Mia Harker and then also like corrupts Lucy, her friend. But there's no shot. Like if Count Dracula came up to me and was like, I'm 100% straight, I'd be like, really? Explain this shit, motherfucker. From the back? Biting me on the neck from the back? <laughs> the Count that you was hanging with? <laughs> you didn't feel no guilt, no remorse or nothing? Was Vlad the Impaler by, or is it like something that happened when he crossed over into vampire form? I've seen the Francis Ford Coppola version like 20 times, and I, I couldn't tell you. At all. I don't even really understand, like, a, a witch puts a curse on him, or, or no, he's just so angry when he comes back from campaigning that his pure anger turns him evil, right? It's something like that. And then, like... Did you see that the the iconic armor from that movie was like for sale on a Hollywood auction site? She was like, like it was not cheap, but I expected it to be like a million dollars. And it was like 20 grand. At least that's the starting build. I'm like, I'm not in the market for a 20 grand piece of <laughs> Gary Oldman merchandise. But, <laughs> but if I was, I mean, that's kind of, it strikes me as a fair price, honestly. Was it full size? It was the, the armor. Now, I'm sure you probably wouldn't want to take it into battle. You know, it's Hollywood, but... 4200 is easy mode. You put that shit on Klarna. <laughs> I can't, bro. My fucking Affirm's maxed out from that Chipotle burrito bowl I bought. I'm paying a buck seventeen a month for the next 12 months, man. Do you think they're ever going to make 100-year mortgages legal here? <laughs> I'm not involved in financial policy at all. But I'm like, houses are expensive. Everything they do makes them more expensive. They can't make them cheaper. It's not possible, apparently. Maybe you, you stop having 30-year mortgages and they say, guess what, motherfucker? It's not even that bad. Hey, you sure the house is $22 million for 1,000 square feet. But when you look at the payments over... 125 years is actually pretty all you got to do is make the payment 
What are we saving for? Bro, we got $9. What do you mean, what are we, what are we saving for? <laughs> Chatter in 2012. $9 lunch. Dan's game. Chatter in 2024. $9 lunch. Bad chest. You know what I'm saying with the inflation these days? It's actually like... At least in Canada, that's a pretty reasonable lunch in the whole scheme of things. <laughs> that's not how you use bat chest? That's not how you use bat chest, bat chest! Six dollar, six inch sub is crazy. I don't even want to talk about it because people much smarter than myself say things like, hey, the five dollar foot long only existed because of the global financial crisis, which brought untold misery to, uh, you know, millions or hundreds of millions of people around the globe. Yeah, but my ass, no disrespect, was 19 years old. That $5 foot long was fucking hidden, man. And now that shit is like 1471. <laughs> I'm not saying we need another financial crisis. I'm just saying when you look at it through my eyes, you can at least understand why I was, um, why I think the sandwiches are so expensive these days. All I'm going to say is, like, $5 footlongs went crazy in the dorms. That's all you need to do. They went double platinum in the dorms. I was more of a dollar slice guy. I mean, that that's a bargain. Don't get me wrong. There ain't nothing wrong with a dollar slice either. You know, I, someone that has lived in Vancouver longer than me is going to need to... Um, just checking something. Is going to need to do the, um, the fact-checking on this. But before I lived here, apparently there was like a, a lot of competition in the cheap pizza slice game. There were competing pizza chains and the way that they competed with each other was trying to make their slices as cheap as possible. Then apparently it got to the point, like the slices were getting down to like, you know, buck fifty, dollar twenty-five, etc. It's it's your squeeze in blood from a stone right i read an article about it like in retrospect that was like apparently the way that one of the pizza chains managed to sustain it is they would just have people steal cheese like they would incentivize theft by basically being like if you have stolen cheese we'll buy it from you and then like if you don't have a job, you go in the no frills, a block of cheddar is pretty easy, or I guess a block of mozzarella is pretty easy to, you know, put in your your pocket or down your waistband or something like that. Then you just walk into the pizza shop and throw a couple of pounds on the on the cash register. Who's to say, man? Who's to say? Solar eclipse is pretty good. I mean, I'll be honest with you. If, the soul, if I was in the path of totality, or I was a few hours away from the path of totality, you could catch me going to the solar eclipse. You're not going to catch me flying across the country for it, though. That one's, that one's simply not going to come to pass. But the, otherwise, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm happy you enjoyed it. I don't know if it's dumb. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to clown on anybody for doing it. If you're, like, retired or whatever, like, send it, man. Have a good time. It's kind of crazy to, like, have a, an obvious reminder that, like, we live on a planet in the solar system. Like, we all, we, we know that we live on a planet in the solar system, but, like, having that effect embossed on your fucking puny human stature by a ball the size of, I don't even know, because normally I'd say the sun. <laughs> That's, yeah, I, I get it. There's something magical about that. There's something spiritual. Of course. See, here's the thing. Like, where, where do I fall on the eclipse? Will I travel on an airplane to see the eclipse? No. Would I drive two and a half hours to see the eclipse? Yes. There are probably people in this chat who just had to walk outside and see it and were like, nah, I'm good. And I think you're fronting. Honestly, I think you're putting on airs. I think you're like, check out how cool I am. Nothing emotionally affects me. Oh yeah? Take a photo of your face right at the end of Evangelion. The stealth credits drop. 
Oh, you can't? Oh, you can't figure out how to get your front-facing camera to- Yeah, yeah, no, I- Totally, I believe you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Makes per- How convenient. Makes perfect sense. Motherfuckers typing in the chat like, I got work. I understand. But like... I say this with love. Is it an email job? Or is it like cardiac surgery? If you're like an emergency doctor or something like that, yeah, like there's exceptions to the rule. <laughs> I have an email job. If I could see the eclipse, it's raining like really bad in Vancouver today. If I could see the eclipse, I would have walked outside. I'm, I'll stop my email job to do it. Why isn't he deathing face cards? If the right thing to do doesn't matter, then it's not the right thing to do. So true, actually not. Mm, I think you'll find that it's so true. It's like when, you know, you're about to win a... We don't even need an analogy. We can just use Balatro. In Balatro, sometimes you'll win in one hand, and people will be like, you shouldn't have played that for the final hand of Anti-8. You should have played this instead. It would have been like 10 times the score. And you're like, well, yeah, but we won. Who fucking cares? Doesn't make, it doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah, but you should have. The actual answer is that you should play whatever's fastest so you can get into the next one. Why are you making more face cards? Literally just to annoy the people who are annoying me. It feels amazing. The more question marks I'm getting in the chat, the better it feels, honestly. It's a, it's a, a sense of power I've never experienced before in my life. Imagine if you lost because of that. Imagine if the fucking Easter Bunny came to your house and gave you a bunch of chocolate. Got about the same odds, a hundred percent, if you're eight. What if the president told you to stop misplaying? I would say, no, you. <laughs> plus two. <laughs> Worst plus two of all time. All right, all right. We've had some fun here. It's time to dial in, okay? It's time to dial in. Fun challenge. It's a good challenge. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Slash marker. Balatro 3. I'm raining it in! So true. I can't wait till fucking 2029 when everybody starts Bradley posting and they're like, wait, why did the Hollywood industry put out a hit on Maestro? It's actually kind of goaded. Get ready, man. Also, uh, mom... <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Mom, come pick me up. I saw someone posting yesterday that they wish they were alive when Gwen Stefani's first solo album, Love Angel Music Baby, came to theaters. I mean, came to record stores. I don't think I'm ready for... Like, I've, I've been making fun of the wrong generation for a while, but... We're getting to the point where I'm like... Oh, the, like, I'm like, I would live through it, bro! You got like 17 year old kids posting like, ah, oh, to have been in the clubs when fucking What You Waiting For by Gwen Stefani came on. I guess I'm like the same way though. I'm like, oh bro, can you imagine seeing the Cocteau twins at fucking Glastonbury? My ass wouldn't have been there. I would have been doing my email job on the fucking phone because it's like 1985 or something like that. I looked at the eclipse and now I can't see the color green. I'm sorry to inform you that you basically deserve that shit. You knew. Like, what do you what do you want them to say, man? They told you not to do that. And what did you do? I looked at the eclipse and now I can't smell. Something happened to my sense of smell, Octopimp. I don't know. Maybe other gamers of a certain age can relate to this. I would say around age 17, 18. I lost my sense of smell and it's been gone for 16, 17 years, right? 
But you know what's crazy? If I have like one beer, my sense of smell goes fucking crazy. Like I can smell anything. But if I'm on zero beers, I'm not helpful. Yesterday, Kate was like, do you smell paint? And I was like, no, nah, you must be crazy. And then my daughter was like, it smells bad in here. She's three and a half years old. One beer and all of a sudden I'm like, hmm, our neighbors are cooking with cardamom. Like it's, it's crazy. You need an MRI? It's fucking, it's been going on for like almost 20 years. That shit would have killed me. It better speed up. I'm a doctor. You should be on one beer at all times. <laughs> That's like my, my favorite joke that I actually kind of believe. Everybody that's seen the movie Another Round, also known as Druk, knows what happens, okay? Four school teachers who are friends read like a, a scientific paper that suggests maybe the human blood alcohol uh, threshold is set 0.05 too low or whatever. So they're just going like two beers deep at all times. The first like hour, hour and 15 minutes of that movie, they're having a great time. They're all loving life. It's only when they deviate from the plan. <laughs> it's only when they start to, to go off of the dose that they were supposed to take, bro. They go too far. It is, you know, obvious mental health problems, physical health problems, etc., etc. I want to, I'm just saying if they could do the movie again, but just have them stick to it. <laughs> Isn't the point that it's impossible to stick to the plan? Yeah, but like, imagine if instead of like, people that are like in control of the situation, if instead you were like a lab rat and you just pressed a button and they like gave you one. And then 30 minutes later, you press another button and they gave you one. And then 30 minutes later, you're like, you know what? I think I need three today. You press the button and then it went, eh, eh. I think they might have been pogging up. That's all I'm saying. There's an American remake happening, so you might get your wish. Me when fucking Jason Sudeikis in the American remake ruins his life by drinking too much hard alcohol. But then the thing that saves him ends up being switching the white claw. <laughs> Alcohol is actually very bad for you. Yeah, yeah, we all know. I'm just saying like they probably would have felt great if they just stuck to their original plan, at least for a while. Eventually, like the chickens would have come home to roost, but <laughs> for like two weeks, they would have been thinking they were fucking Superman, bro. No doubt about it. They should, Morgan Spurt, no, actually, he's, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure he's a recovering alcoholic. Probably should not do that. Someone should do Super Size Me, but for Druk, they should do 30 days, two beers a day. Well, actually, that, I'm pretty sure they would just describe as like 18% of the population. I don't know, I'm, I don't know what I'm cooking, and I'm just bummed out, man. <laughs> Oh, that's everybody. Okay. Well, listen, I'm still cooking it up up here. All right. Anyway, I got, that's true. That's not funny. I shouldn't have laughed so hard when you said he was already drinking more than two a day during the McDonald's shit. <laughs> but that again, this is stolen from Twitter. But like the the weird moment of like growing up is when he goes to Morgan Spurlock goes to the doctor and supersize me and the doctor's like your liver has the size uh, the signs of like a end stage alcoholic and then he's like whoa this McDonald's is fucking me up and then t like 15 years later he was like I'm an alcoholic and I was like what the fuck man if I was Ray Kroc I'd be fucking furious right now I'm not saying the McDonald's is good for you, but you fucking cooked us over that shit, man. You made us start selling salads. We got rid of the supersize menu option, etc., etc. You gotta disclose that shit, bro. There was a show in 2005 called 30 Days, and in episode six, the mom had to drink like a college student every day for a month. That's crazy. What happened to her? Because I'm 35. If I drank every day like I did in college, I would be dead. You can only do it 
and have a smile on your face, at least from like ages 18 to 25, maybe. She was living it up. It actually improved her life. You fucking liar. <laughs> Wait, is that true, Chad? Is this real? No shot. She became a pilot. Listen, man. This is a Mads Mikkelsen movie? That's how we got onto this shit to begin with, bro. There's only a small period of time in your life. I mean, I don't know if you can ever get away with it, i.e. like be free of long-term consequences of it. There's only a very small period of time when you can even like come close to getting away with it. Fucking go to bed 10 p.m., wake up 8 a.m., go to class. Oh, it's fucking trivia night. Okay. 12 times 2 multi, we got a flush. Go to trivia night, stay up until fucking 3 a.m., oversleep, wake up at 11. That night, try to go to bed at 9.30 so I can wake up at 6. Don't fall asleep until 1. Wake up at 10. Like, the whole every day was like a, a dice roll. When was I going to bed? When was I waking up? Like... And then I'd be like, the doctor is like, hey, any symptoms? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm having trouble sleeping. I don't know. I think it runs in my family. What are you talking about, man? Stuntman got nerfed. They, they will never force me to update. I'm putting my Nintendo Switch in a Faraday cage. Also, how do you guys know so much about the, the Balatro patch notes? You know, it's a once in a lifetime eclipse today. It's called reading. This is just rude. There's no need for that. That level of derision. It's old news. <laughs> I know we've talked about it before. It's crazy, like, to think about how fucked up it would have been to live in, like, the year six and witness a solar eclipse, right? Like, I would have been freaking the fuck out. Can you imagine? It's like such a great prank. <laughs> like, you definitely... there. You would have to be stupid not to interpret it as a sign from God that whatever you're doing is like, cut it out. If I was on campaign with Caesar in Gaul and I had a fucking... Pila at Vercingetorix's belly and the sun disappeared for a second, I would be embracing him in a hug. I would throw down my arms and we would walk back to Rome together as brothers. I can't even imagine. That must have been crazy. Has anyone checked on that uninhabited, or sorry, uncontacted islands? where there's like that human tribe and every time people go to visit them, the, they die. <laughs> like they murder the visitor and then like everybody is like, oh, let's never do that again. And then like 10 years later, some other motherfucker is like, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> Were they in the path of totality, man? We got to make sure they're okay. No, please don't tell me they all looked at it. No, bro. Why are you laughing at the dude who got murdered on Sentinel Island? They don't want to be fucking contacted, bro. They basically said, like, if you come here, we'll kill you. I'm not rooting for the, the murderers, just FYI, but I, I think that, like, they don't really know what's up. <laughs> or maybe they know exactly what's up and they're like, that's why they don't want to be contacted. I don't know. When did making comedy become illegal? Must have been right before Nanette came out. It's a little stand-up joke for you. I know a lot of people love Nanette. It's just, it's, it's not my tempo. I respect it, but it's, it's not my tempo. Plus two, plus two, plus two. <laughs> oh. Hannah Gadsby, you just got roasted. I don't care who knows it. I'm just stoking controversy now. Ramen. Best noodle soup. No disrespect to the proud nation of Vietnam. Pho is delicious as well. It's number one, bro. It clears soba. It clears udon. It clears... Lamian, which doesn't even make sense. But it does. It clears chicken noodle. But any day of the week it clears chicken noodle. You don't even have to think about that. Clear spaghetti. Not a soup. Spaghetti, not a soup. Unless you're making it wrong. Your, your sauce is too watery. 
Probably still good, but a little wide. What about pad thai? Also not a soup. I'm starting to wonder, I'm, I'm understanding now why everybody's so impressed with my food guesser performances is because you've never seen food. As a noted food seer, just trust me on this one, okay? What about broccoli cheddar? See, now that's a soup, but that one doesn't have noodles in it. So yet again, I feel like I uh, just need to ask you to pump the brakes on that one a little bit. What about Italian wedding soup? A soup, but no noodles. No, that one has meatballs in it. Close, because they're commonly found with spaghetti, but it's a different situation. So close, that one's a shape. It has tortellini in it. Tortellini, mm, this is controversial. I told myself I was never gonna be a fire brand again, but I must speak the truth. I don't think tortellini is a noodle. It is pasta, there's no doubt about it, but I look at it more as a, I mean, I hate to get into these um, semantic discussions. I feel like if, torti if tortellini is a noodle, then a potsticker is a noodle, a gyoza is a noodle, a dumpling is a noodle. I feel like tortellini is not a noodle. Otherwise, it just opens the door to, to too many questions that I don't want to have to answer. No pastas or noodles? Okay, now see, you've gone in the other direction here. And that just doesn't make any sense. Almost all pastas are actually noodles. You've, you've gone too far. But you have to evaluate it on a case-by-case -case basis. In my opinion, if you want to be honest. I mean, if you want to just go out telling lies, sure, you could say something like pasta isn't noodles. But I prefer to keep things a little bit more sane. What's a good example of a noodle pasta? Um, tortellini. Ravioli. Gnocchi. Farfalle, mm, you, see, you know, you got me thinking, I almost feel like farfalle crosses back into noodle territory, which is crazy to say, don't get me wrong. Orzo, orzo not noodles, that's rice. Orzo is my favorite rice. Orzo is rice, plus two. I know that it's not rice, like, in the fucking genome, but it's rice when it's in my mouth. Orzo's the worst of both worlds. Wrong, it's literally... It tastes better than rice, no disrespect. Oh no, my shit's fucking debuffed. I know it isn't. <laughs> it's just one joker's disabled every hand. It's the easiest game of all time. What can I say? Can't co-sign that one, big dog. I'm telling you, if you boiled orzo and then used it to make fried rice, that shit would go insane. Then why isn't it a thing? Okay, Dr. Pangloss, maybe because we don't live in the best of all possible worlds. Your food digs are so consistently weird. There needs to be a letterbox for food so I can judge people who say shit like that. Imagine you drop like your food takes are so weird, then I go to your fucking pantry box and see that you rated chicken nuggets five out of five and fucking <laughs> beef wellington like a one and a half. I'd be like, oh really? Like, I'm going to get insulted by someone who has uh, chicken nuggets at a five out of five and a beef wellington at one and a half. Okay. You're the one who said ramen's the best noodle soup. And I honestly, God is my witness, I stand on business for that one. Where does pho fall on the list? Second best noodle soup, but I will say not even the best thing on the menu at the Vietnamese restaurant. I've been mixing it up a little bit lately. I'm not afraid, obviously, to get a banh mi. That's just a sandwich. But even more than that, I'm not afraid to get a fucking lemongrass pork chop with rice. I'm not afraid. You know what goes crazy you never hear anybody talk about? Vietnamese curry. Whenever you talk about curry, people are like India, Thailand, Cambodia, Japan. Nobody's ever like, what about Vietnamese curry? It's good, man. It's a little gravy. It's a little sweeter. They, got, they, they put carrots in it, but it's like a fucking huge piece of carrot, like a potato. It's not like a little chopped Andrew. Also, I'm not saying that I'm better than you, but what I will say is when I go to a restaurant, like a Vietnamese restaurant, I'm like, everyone here orders pho, man. Everyone here orders pho. I feel bad for their restaurateur. I'm sure they're like, we don't want to just make pho. We want to make lemongrass pork chop with rice. We want to make Vietnamese curry, you know? We want to make uh, banh mi and stuff like that. So I kind of give them a wink and a nod. And I know when they, when they see me and they come to the table, they're like, let me guess, rare beef pho or fucking beef balls pho. And then I go, actually, 
I'll take a number 71. And they go, what? <laughs> Inspirational white guy goes into Vietnamese restaurant and orders perfect number 71 in English. <laughs> Ain't she at least annoying white guy? <laughs> you got me. Oh, man, I don't need any more chips, bro. I'm chipped up to the gills. By the way, I think, like, I'm just going to say it. I think one of the reasons you um, watch me is because that story that I just told is relatable. Because that is actually the, my first impulse when I walk into a restaurant like that is to feel like that. I'm not going to be like the other patrons. I'm going to show them I'm an elevated patron and I'm going to get I'm going to get something that's not pho. Then I go, what are you talking about? But I still don't order the pho. <laughs> I still... <laughs> I still order something else. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, they were preparing to cook 99% pho. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> so, like, maybe once every three weeks, I take my daughter to this restaurant um, where there's food that both of us can enjoy. It's a pub. The pub has like 40 things on the menu and they always have a different special but then oftentimes there's like two tables in the restaurant that are occupied and i'm like how are you making like 12 different sandwiches 15 different salads seven different entrees like i'm just it's all frozen. Yeah, but here's the thing. I've had like seven things there and they were all good. So maybe more restaurants should be using their freezers, man. Maybe Gordon Ramsay doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He's not wrong. He is a Michelin star. Uh, Mickey Mouse Michelin stars. Let's talk about it. First restaurant, uh, Le Cordon Bleu. That was in the bubble. Doesn't count. Second restaurant, he got carried by his sous chef. Everybody knows that. He was on a league minimum deal as a rookie. Third one, <laughs> it's like, I don't know, I don't know ball enough to, to keep it going, but he's a system chef. <laughs> I don't buy Michelin stars. Cause my just my two cents. How is there not a McDonald's with a Michelin star? There's like 30,000 of them in America alone. And they still haven't given one to McDonald's? Like, it actually doesn't make sense. I should have definitely taken High Priestess. Because they're all the same. Brother, <laughs> if you think every McDonald's is created equal, you haven't been to some of the McDonald's that I've been. There's some of them! All McDonald's are equal, but some of them are more equal than others. That's all I'm going to say. A little literary post for you. There is one with a Michelin star. Let's go, dude! Is it, um... Trying to think, best McDonald's Vancouver, best McDonald's Vancouver. Is it, um, uh, the, the McDonald's on West Broadway in Kitsilano? That's because the, the one on Willing Don? I said in Vancouver, you Bernabarian. Because it's definitely not going to be Carysdale McDonald's. The fries don't come out right. At this. The, the breakfast comes out okay. The fries don't come out right. It's definitely not going to be like uh, Tinseltown McDonald's. And it's definitely not going to be Terminal and Main McDonald's. Those ones are cursed. Like you just, they're inhospitable environments to step foot in. Hang on, I'm, I'm looking at librarians post here. McDonald's is often seen as a fast food chain that doesn't deserve any recognition in the color, culinary world. However, upon... Closer examination, it is clear McDonald's actually deserves a Michelin star. Let's go, bro! People said they can't get a Michelin star. That's for restaurants you drive to. Uh, excuse me, you ever see the drive through One of the greatest logistical inventions of the 20th century? Bait is believable again. <laughs> I love walking, okay? You're never gonna get me to say that I hate walking. All I'm saying... If there's a Burger King that's a two-minute walk, and there's a McDonald's that's a five-minute drive, strap yourself in, honey. We're getting chicken nuggets. 
Hey, Anel, I stopped at Lucy's Diner last night, had a delicious burger there. What well, specifically which diner of Lucy's? Oh, Lucy's East Side Diner. Sorry, sorry. I didn't recognize it without the without the geographical position. Oh, Lucy's East Side Diner. Okay. I've never been, but I have I've been around for sure. I've been around. Round, round, get around, I better round, I get around, round, round, I get I get a we but can I while we're talking about the uh the Beach Boys. I, those of you not in my Discord, you will be proud to hear this. My Discord was clowning on the Beach Boys. And I know what you're going to say, hey, and I'll cut them some slack. You know, Surfing USA is kind of a goofy song. We, they weren't talking about Surfing USA. They were talking about Wouldn't It Be Nice. Side one, track one on motherfucking Pet Sounds, bro. An unassailable classic of an album. And they were, they were going, yeah, yeah, you're so right, you're so right. The, the, wouldn't it be nice is so fucking goofy and corny. What happened to you? <laughs> Discord is crazy, they're right. Wouldn't it be nice? That's a, that's a 10 out of 10 song from the 60s, bro. Cardi better? Well, be that as it may. Pet Sounds is trash. What's your favorite album? Oh, five out of five chicken nuggets. 1.5 out of 5 pet sounds? Yeah, sure, okay. Like, I'm gonna take advice from you. Mike Love, haters meet in your Discord. I know it's sad, man. It's sad. Sloop John B kind of goofy, though. I'll give you that one. That's not my favorite track on the album. There's that classic tweet, though, that's like, it's one of the best songs of all time about having your corn stolen. <laughs> it's just, it gets me, man. It gets me. Threes and twos can go. Then that dude came down, stole all of my corn. Sheriff John Stone, why is it so musical theater coded? Why don't you leave me alone? Yeah, yeah, this is the worst ship I've ever been on. And then the fucking, the chorus line comes in from the back. It would totally, dude, they should do a Pet Sounds musical, bro. It's got the harmonies are built in, bro. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing so hard at the comment that says, my arms are just fucking stuck like this, but in all, like, Pascal case, like it's a, a song off Pet Sounds. I guess my arms are just stuck like this. Ooh, 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 ooh. You guys fucked me up, by the way, when you lied to me and told me that Boy Genius wasn't from Toronto. I've never seen them. I've never heard their music. I was 100% sure they're from Toronto. They just had that vibe. What are you talking about? I don't know. They just got like a Toronto vibe. Can you imagine like Torontonians being like, aren't you going to go see the Boy Genius show tonight at Lee's Palace? Boy Genius too popular for Lee's Palace. Bro, Sum 41 played there in 1998. Lee's Palace is kind of goaded, man. I thought it was the... By watching much music in Kingston, Ontario, when they did the like upcoming concert listings for Toronto, you would think that Lee's Palace was like the biggest venue on earth. You'd be like, holy shit, fucking Biff Naked. Lee's Palace. I'm Mother Earth. Lee's Palace. Moist. Lee's Palace. Our Lady Peace. Lee's Palace. Fucking Billy Talent. Lee's Palace. Matthew Good Band. Lee's Palace. Matthew Good Hold the Band. Lee's Palace. Did you hear about the Vancouver Miku concert being a total disappointment? Uh, my wife had a good time, so um, maybe mind your profanity. I hate to be this guy. It's just the evolution of nerddom, isn't it? Can't wait for the Hatsune Miku concert. So excited for the Hatsune Miku concert. Mm -hmm. Line up at 1 p.m. Doors don't open till 6. Gotta get one of the fucking proprietary glow wands for the Hatsune Miku concert. They sent out an email. Please do not bring any old wands. Those ones won't work here. Spoilers, they totally work there. Then the concert happens. Worst concert I've ever been to. What a disappointment. I'm sure it's fine, man. Don't worry. It's okay. It's probably okay. She actually vomited on the audience. 
I didn't know she was real like that. I thought that was like a GG Allen thing. What if they wheeled out the CRT? <laughs> They're like, Hatsune Miku is sick today. So instead of doing our science fair presentations... I know what you're talking about. I've heard the songs. <laughs> do you think, like, if you were um, Hank Schrader, do you think you would have just let Walter White, like, fucking chill? Like, keep doing that shit? Probably. I'm not, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. Even if I'm in the DEA, that's like, it's just a fucking job to me. I'm not fucking up everybody's home life and shit just to, what, for employee of the month? He killed people? Not my business. <laughs> I guess he was a cop, so it might have been his business, but I honestly, I, I think I would have let him just keep it up, man. Because I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm just not nosy. I'm a vibe preserver, exactly. You wouldn't be a cop anyway. I honestly feel like... I think I would just be like... Do they have like monitoring software? Or could I get away with just like sleeping in my car? <laughs> they do be sleeping in the car? There's quotas? A quota for police doesn't make sense to me. What if there's just like, what if crime's on vacation? I gotta file some tickets even though nobody's doing anything wrong. Like, that, that doesn't seem right. To me, it seems crazy to assume that there would be like a, an equal amount of crime, like, every month. I'm the best to ever do it. I guess I'll just throw in a quick slash marker here. That's ch like challenge four or five or something? I don't know. We. We're the best to ever do it. I don't know what the hell we're going to do now. I hate to say it. I'm a little embarrassed. So I got to go pee again. <laughs> I'll be back in just a second. Oh, man. You know, it'd be a funny guy to exist. Guy who washes his hands every time he goes to the bathroom, but doesn't flush. That could be a sketch on like SNL or something like that. Could be like, you know, you're at your friend's house and the dude comes out of the bathroom and then you go like, ah, that was fast. Did you wash your hands? He's like, of course I wash my hands. What kind of a, an asshole do you think I am? Not wash my hands? You think I'm filthy or something like that? And he goes, I was just playing, brother. I was just playing. Anyway, I got to go next. And then he walks in and you just hear, Ah, oh, what is that? You didn't flush? Of course I didn't flush, bro. What do you fucking hate the earth? It's just pee. Get over it. Pee on the pee. Oh, you believe that shit about the airborne particles and the germs and shit like that? It's just pi just piss on the piss, bro. But don't flush! I'll shit on that pissed piss later. Put it on right after the witch cooking buffalo wings sketch. I'm mad that you guys don't know how good the witch cooking buffalo wings sketch could be. That's actually like the kind of character if you bust it out in an SNL audition, you're a, you're not even featured player next year. You're on the main cast. You're right after fucking Daryl Hammond and Keenan Thompson. So I guess your last name starts with the letter between U and Z, okay? Hey, hey man, what are you going to do in your SNL audition? I don't know. I'm thinking about doing witch cooking buffalo wings recipe? Yeah, yeah, do it, man. Do it. One file of Franklin's roiling crimson tonic. <laughs> oh, it gets me every time. <laughs> Look at the plus twos, man. They love it. What's the joke? It's just like, what if an, a person like in the medieval era was describing Frank's red hot sauce? It's just a hemomancer bit all over again? Bro, every fucking joke is just fucking no soap radio, okay? Get with the times. We used to have real comedy, now we're stuck with this. The real comedy guy wearing a fucking flower on his lapel asks you to smell it. When you get close, he squeezes something, shoots a little bit of piss in your face. 
You want to go back to that? No thanks. <laughs> Shit almost killed me the first time. That's comedy. What are we what are we doing here? Let me let me see if my wife is ready to stream. She's already streaming. Enjoy your afternoon or your evening. Enjoy the eclipse. Does that shit go north, south, east, west? Like, or is it like because it's in space, the directions don't make sense? Did New Zealand get it first or like last? It went southwest to northeast. They got it not at all. Fucking North Sentinel Island ass. Hey, what do New Zealanders and the residents of North Sentinel Island have in common? Uh, n the, the sun looked normal today for both of them. All right, see you tomorrow. <laughs> I saw that <clears throat> technically it was possible to see the eclipse in Vancouver. Except we got the rain. Wah, wah. So even that, like it wasn't going to be total eclipse. It was going to be partial eclipse from Vancouver. But I was like, yo, still, I want to see the, the partial eclipse. That sounds pretty cool. And then it rained. The most important day of Earth, Moon, Sun history. The sun, the freaking earth goes, nah, it's gonna rain. Oh, you wanted to see the eclipse? It's beyond the cloud. So, hope you got the beyond the cloud goggles ready. When's the next eclipse? Even the partial one. October 2nd in South America. Let me just schedule that in right now. 2026 is the next total eclipse in Europe. Wait. When 2026? Because I'm planning to go to Europe in 2025. And if we like Europe, we might go back in 2026. August 12, 2026 for the full. Scribble that in, baby. I even have my notebook. I'm going to scribble. Uh, where? Spain? Perfect. Have not been to Spain. I'll go to Spain. All right. Hola, senor. I will learn some Spanish. Eat some tacos. Gracias. Eat some quesadillas. Tacos in Spain. Wait, you guys don't need... Tacos in Spain? That's Mexico? But I thought... I thought... You don't eat tacos? In Spain? I... I didn't know. <laughs> paella? What the heck is paella, dude? The tacos? It's not like it started from Spain and then got to Mexico? It's... it's like... This is Mexico? Oh no. Kate would not pass global. Are you kidding me? I will not pass any bulls, wordles, freaking nothing. No nodals, nodals, wobbles, blobbles, nothing. Bro, my brain is empty. Smooth ass brain. Dude, oh my god, here's the big trivia for you. You're the show Bluey, right? Even the freaking 30-year-old ass watching Bluey, which is a kid's show. What is Bingo's mom's name? I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Wow. I guess you hate women. <laughs> I guess, I guess you hate women. Way to go. Okay, we're all gamers. Did you know Bluey is out for a game? You can technically play Bluey the video game. They didn't even say it in Bluey video game. 
I know. I saw, I saw the plushie. I thought that was bingo. And I said, oh, you have a bingo's plushie. And then they canceled my ass and said, that's not bingo. That's chili. And I was like, that who? And then they're like, it's bingo's mom. You don't know her? Well, I was like, oh, shit, dude. I watched maybe like 20 episodes of Bluey with my daughter. Never once they said her name. <laughs> Where do you hear her name? Maybe on like freaking Wikipedia, dude. I hear dad's name all the time. Mom goes like, Bandit, come over here. Clean the freaking poop on the floor. Bandit, come over here. Clean the toilet. Bandit, come over here. Fix the light. Bandit, come over here. Play with the kid. Like, freaking mom calls him all the time. But he never calls her. He never calls her, dude. And then... We watched, I don't know, like five episodes of Bluey together. Ryan, me, and Luna. And I said, it's a good show. Did you like it? And then Ryan said, no. It's setting unexpec un unfair expectations for dads. Bandit is freaking has to go out to the work, comes back, doesn't do anything but look after the kid. It's like, he, he doesn't have a life. This is not good. <laughs> he was so stressed out. Ryan was so stressed out after watching Bluey. I have never seen the mom do anything. Excuse me, she was fixing fixing the toilet. She's like, I gotta play with you, Bluey. I gotta fix the toilet. And she's like, this button, this button, this button. And then Bandit comes in and goes like, Hey, honey, what are you doing? <laughs> Breaks the bathroom tile. My dude's so big. No tile can handle it. And I go, and then the the chili, Bingo's mom, goes like, Well, now you gotta fix that, Bandit, because you broke that shit. Ryan sees himself. I think Ryan sees himself through Bandit's life. And I think it's kind of like triggering, triggering him a little bit. Whereas Daddy Pig, he dead ass, he's freaking so lazy. My dude would be jumping in the puddle. Freaking, I don't know how old Daddy Pig is. Probably looking at 40, something like that. And he just goes like, yo, puddle, let's go. He jumps. And then whenever Daddy Pig and Mommy Pig just wants to have a free day, they ship George and Peppa to the Grandma's Pig. Like... They're just so easy for them. They just go like, oh, we're so tired. I don't want to deal with Peppa and George. All right. You guys go to grandma's, Grandma Pig's house. And they have a full day doing nothing. I have not seen... I've seen one episode of Bluey and Bingo going to Bandit's mom's place. Like the grandma's place once and then like they just played the um what's that game like you have to act out the word and then they have to say what that is they just play that charades yeah they were playing charades and that was it and then in one of the episodes honestly i forgot which one i think it's somewhat somewhere in season two and um there's this part where I think it was Bluey. No, it was Bingo doing it to Bluey. But they do like the little like hand thing. And it's like, open the lid. Put your finger in there. Move it around. Take it out. Close the lid. And it's like, and they go, like, thank you for cleaning my toilet. And then they go like, Kiki! And my daughter thought that was so good. She learned it. She did it at the daycare. And then she spread it around all the daycare kids. And then one of the daycare mom was like, I don't know where he learned it. But all day he has been doing this thing. Just open the lid and swiss it around. Like, thank you for cleaning the toilet. And I think we I've done it already like eight times today. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> and I said, well, technically it's from Bluey. 
And um, our daughter might have seen the show and might have spread it to other kids. And I said, did you do that? And then she was like, uh-huh. I was <laughs> like... <laughs> At least Peppa and Bluey is better than Bootlicker Paw Patrol. I have not seen a single episode of Paw Patrol, but I cannot legally say anything bad about Paw Patrol because apparently Paw Patrol was made in Canada. I am legally cannot say negative things about Paw Patrol. But I think Paw Patrol is mostly for boys, and I'm just saying that not because I'm sexist, because my daughter said. <laughs> because my daughter was like, those, that show is for boys. I don't watch Paw Patrol. <laughs> but I said, why not? They got they got girl doggies in there. Sky and something. And then she knows all the name. But she goes like, yeah, but that's for boys. No girl watch Paw Patrol. So I'm like, all right. Well, okay then. <laughs> she knows what she likes. She has, I try to tell her, man, I try to tell her all the time. Girls can play with monster trucks, girls can play with trucks, girls can play with vehicles. It's not just a boy thing. And she said, no. She said, you crazy to me. <laughs> she said, when I said that, when I said girls can play with trucks, she said, you crazy. With that same tone, like she thought I was insane. <laughs> Girls play with trucks? But I, like I could not I could not break the barrier, dude. And then um what is it? She brought she likes to play with girly stuff, aka like makeup, dress up, cute dolls, cute pink stuff. And then, um, I don't know, honestly, I don't know where she got all those. Because when she was growing up, we had trucks and cars and, you know, like, we didn't have any, like, gender-defining toys. But then, now, when we get, like, cars or trucks, she goes like, no, I don't want that! That's for boys! And she get offended, dude, she get offended. And then I saw a bunch of other posts related to this. And their parents also are, you know, totally, like, gender neutral. But then the kids just pick it up in, you know, like, daycare or kindergarten or something like that. And then they, too, have, if they're, like, the girl, they want to be princess. You know, they got the princess tiaras and dress and stuff like that. So even if the parent wants to not be that way, it's kind of hard to say... It's hard to describe how so the society is fucked to a three-year-old kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to a three-year-old, it's just princesses and magics and happy dresses and pink flowers and all that. Here I am trying to teach, like, that's no good. It makes no sense to them. Luna likes makeup. Bro, she loves makeup. She loves it so much. I got her, like, the wooden makeup toy thingy. And then, like, Mommy, Mommy, I want to play with you. I want to do, like, the makeup thing. And I said, Oh, Mommy is busy right now. Mommy's cooking. Do you think you can do that to Daddy? And then she goes, like, No! No boys can put makeup on! And I said, That's not true. Boys can put makeup on. And then she's like, No! And I was like, <laughs> Okay. I think to a three-year-old, you can't really convey much. In, in, I think, instead of thinking it like, whoa, why is your three-year-old acting like this? I think we should reverse it and think, why are we getting offended by a three-year-old who doesn't want to put a fake pretend makeup on daddy? You know what I'm saying? I think we should look into ourselves. Or the society, more so than the three-year-old kid. <laughs> oh. But then, you know, obviously if she was not three-year-old, if she was like 25, then I'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But 
She's three. How can you tell her that? <laughs> when we were at lunch yesterday, she said, Daddy, why do we die? Well, today, she was asking me, why do people litter? And I said, littering is very bad, right? And she goes, yeah. And I said, we never litter. And she goes, yeah. And so she says, so then why other people litter? And I said, maybe they're not as smart as we are. And then she goes, yeah, yeah. We're number one. We're first place. <laughs> We're first place. They're third place. And then for some reason to her, third place is bad. <laughs> first place is good. Third place is bad. And we had told her, third place is good. And she goes, no, they get poopy bronze. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> Daddy get poopy bronze. Mommy gets silver and I get gold medal. What are you going to tell her about the fourth place? Oh, trust me. You think I didn't? <laughs> I'll tell her there is more than three places. There is fourth, fifth, sixth. But anyone who can get a medal like bronze, silver, gold, they're, they're really good. And she's like, no, third is bad. Third is the worst. I'm telling you, you can't input logic into three-year-old, okay? <laughs> but then she doesn't pronounce third, third. She pronounced third, turd. So when we went to um, my niece's house, <laughs> one of the one of the girl came towards me and she said, um, Luna said, third place. <laughs> third place. And then I was like, oh, she means, she means third. She means third. And then sometimes she would pronounce things wrong. And then like, you know, for example, instead of saying like sheet, she will say like shit because it's easier to pronounce shit versus sheet. And one of our knees went like, because oh, like my daughter was shit. And then, but she didn't mean shit. She meant sheet. And then one of my knees kind of like freaked out a little bit. And she went like, oh, like she gasped and like, like covered her mouth. And we're like, no, 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 she, she means sheet, sheet. Cause like we're we're trying to put the bed, like setting up the bed for the nighttime, and she's like, I like my bed sheets or something like that. But then she said, I like my bed shit. <laughs> it's such a nice smooth shit. <laughs> and we're like sheets. She's saying sheets, the bed sheets, very soft sheets. Oh man. Oh, and then there's the. Really good story. So stethoscope, it's very hard to pronounce it. Stethoscope, because she loves to play doctors with uh, me, Ryan, and then my nieces. So they were playing doctors all day when we were there. And then she couldn't pronounce stethoscope. When I say, can you say stethoscope? She would say testicle. And I am not... Joking you, she literally says testicle instead of saying stethoscope. You'll be wondering, those two words are not similar. I don't know what to tell you. I say stethoscope. She goes testicles. And then, <laughs> and then she said, like, come over here. Can you pass my testicle? And then <laughs> one of my knees freaked out. She went like, Oh, <laughs> and then I said, "No, she meant steth stethoscope, stethoscope." And she's like, "Oh, oh, okay." And it's like, "Yeah, that's what I said, testicle." <laughs> like, no stethoscope. <laughs> I think I actually have a video. Wait, well, hold on. I took a video of it because I thought it was so funny. I like stethoscope. Testicle.
Hello, Queen. Thank you very much with the Prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Not the video. Oh, come on. You're gonna freaking enjoy it. Test. <laughs> Can you say stethoscope? Test. <laughs> okay, hear it again. Can you say stethoscope? Test. Test. <laughs> Can you say stethoscope? Test. <laughs> <laughs> you see? I didn't make that shit up, did I? Oh, man. <laughs> she, she says stethoscope, but it just comes out testicle. But the testicle becomes testicle. Thank you, Watanabe, for 10 gifties. Thank you, thank you. I think it's just... It's stethoscope. But then the... Like, she cannot really pronounce the S well. Because it's like... S -s -s like, in between your teeth, kind of. So it's kind of difficult. difficult. So instead of ste... So... I cannot do it slow. Stethoscope. She goes... Te testoscope. But then testoscope has also... Scope has S. So it becomes testicle, testicle. So it becomes testicle. <laughs> so that's that's how it happens, I think. So whenever we play doctors, she's like, "Where's my testicle? Where's my testicle?" <laughs> and like me and Raya were laughing, but you know, like she's like, "Stop laughing!" I'm like, "I can't. It's so funny." Where's my testicle? And then I thought it was really funny and cute. So I wanted to upload it to my Instagram. And then Raya said, don't upload it on Instagram. When she grows up, she's gonna freaking hate you. So I said, okay, I will not up upload it. <laughs> Instead, I'll talk about it. <laughs> reading is... Reading easy? Writing hard for you then. Reading easy. <laughs> you, you mean reading is easy? Just read forehead. Okay, let me give uh let me bring up text file in four different languages and have you read. <laughs> and you can tell me what, what the document is about. Reading easy. Ooh, it's um that was like yoda <laughs> reading ah easy easy is reading hmm reading easy it is hmm yeah you know yoda yoda you don't know yoda the green alien that everyone thinks is cool. The old dude. <laughs> oh my god. I did not I did not I did I'm not touching that Watanabe laying trap not stepping on it. Do you mean adult baby Yoda? Grogu, that's the name. Grogu is the baby Yoda. Grogu is the baby Yoda. And then adult Yoda is Yoda. But honestly, can I say something? I find Grogu not cute and looks weird to me. I do not like Grogu. Do you know about Yaddle? What's Yaddle? What the heck? Dude, Yoda was bald? Oh my gosh, dude, I'm freaking out. I thought... Dude, I didn't, I didn't think Yoda was bald. I thought Yoda just... 
was like that. Oh no, Yoda's bald, dude. Look at Yaddle. Yaddle got like a lot of hair. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, Yoda's so old, he went bald. That's crazy. He's like over 800 years old. Yeah, but Yaddle is also very old. So you can't use that argument. Yaddle, Yaddle might be 800 years old. Or maybe even older. But she ain't bald. Also cool trivia. Do you know the name of Yoda species? Is it Yodalian? It's Yoda's species. Ah. Yes. Yoda's species is Yoda's species. The one and only. He's basically like Jesus. If Jesus was out in the Star Wars, they wouldn't call us human. They would call us Jesus' species. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We're not human. We are Jesus' species, dude. She's like middle age for her species. Please stop talking about so much detail of a character that shows up for half a second in a not even a main movie, but in like freaking spin off. She's in a lot of books, bro, I can't. These are the things I'm just like, oh my gosh. Too much. They like show up for a second and then they're dead the next time and then they freaking have a biography of that character. Kills me, dude. You underscore what an RB gifted a tier one sub to Milk and Siggies. They have given 1,159 gift subs in the channel. Excuse me? <laughs> oh! Oh my gosh, that's your name! <laughs> oh my gosh. I was confused for a second. And it was your name, and I went, oh wow, dot dot dot. A lot of implication in that dot dot dot. Thank you, Watanabe, for gift subs. Thank you, thank you. Do I like gardening? I like gardening. It's very peaceful. I like it. But I don't like gardening during summertime. When there are mosquitoes. When there's no mosquitoes, then that's fine. But anyways, thank you everyone for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow. With continuation of Persona 3 Reload. Thank you, thank you. Also, thank you so much for the, all the gift subs today. And subscriptions and resubscriptions. Shout out to Loli Nickel Watanabe, Pac Jr., Betabis for all the gifties. Thank you. I can see you guys get really excited about me in pain. Hooray! No, that, that, that. I should have just spelled the leak wrong. L E A K. And I can eat raw leak all the time. It's, it's leaking water. <laughs> That's worse. Wait. Not like that. Like leaking water. Not like leak as pee. You know what? Well, I'm glad. That I didn't spell it wrong. <laughs> Consume this, no thanks. <laughs> okay, I'll end the stream. Bye, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Yo, man, open up.
Yo! Open up, man. What do you want, man? My girl just caught me. You let her catch you? I don't know how I let this happen. With who? The girl next door, you know. Man! I don't know what to do. Say it wasn't you! All right. Honey came in, she caught me red and did creep it with the girl next door. Picture this, we were both butt naked, banging on the bathroom floor. How could I forget that I had given her an extra key? All this time she was standing there, she never took her eyes off me. Oh, you fucking give me a one light of your life. Just press her and a witness for the king of pillar. You better watch your back before she turn into a killer. Let's review the situation, you get caught in her. To be a true player, you have to know how to play. If she say it like a bitch, you say it day day. Never been to a world when she say, say, say. And she claims that well, you tell her, baby, no way. But she caught me on the counter. It wasn't me. Saw me banging on the sofa. It wasn't me. I even had her in the shower. It wasn't me. She even caught me on camera. It wasn't me. Saw the marks on my shoulder. It wasn't me. Heard the words that I told her. It wasn't me. Heard the scream getting louder. It wasn't me. She stayed until it was over. I need to find a low part. And she caught me red-handed, creeping with the girl next door. Picture this, we were both butt naked, banging on the bathroom floor. I had tried to keep her from what she was about to see. Why should she believe me when I told her it wasn't me? Thank you, you know that you really like the sex. Here it is, it is, and it's a low flex. A bloody ass of favorite in the complex. Please believe me, you better change your specs. You know she's a go bring a holy thing from the past. And it's all the better than to know a low five ass. Quick fun, you to know how to talk. But if you ask a gun, you know you better run fast. But she cut me on the counter. Wasn't me. Saw me banging on the sofa. Wasn't me. I even had her in the shower. Wasn't me. <laughs> cut me on... Someone Wasn't said he's <laughs> like Batman on drugs. Wasn't me. It got me so Wasn't good. Wasn't me. It's not me. She stayed until it was over. It's not me. Honey came in and she cut me red and did keep him with the girl next door. Picture this, we were both butt naked banging on the bathroom floor. How could I forget that I had given her an extra key? All this time she was standing there, she never took her eyes off me. Gonna tell her that I'm sorry for the pain that I've caused. I've been listening to your reason, it makes no sense at all. We could tell her that I'm sorry for the pain that I've caused. You may think that you're a player, but you're completely lost in swashing. Honey came in and she cut me red-handed, creeping with the girl next door. Picture this, we were both butt naked, banging on the bathroom floor. How could I forget that I had given her an extra key? All this time she was standing there, she never took her eyes off me. That was incredible sips, thank you. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. I was hoping I would have one shaggy part though. Turns out it didn't matter too much whether or not I could do the shaggy voice or not. <laughs>